Servo motors, or simply servos, are integrated motors that contain their own power and control circuitry. They're generally available in two flavors. Positional, or angular servos, can be accurately driven to specific angles. They're often used in radio control equipment for control surfaces and steering. You'll also see them in robotic arms. Continuous rotation or 360 degree servos are essentially a motor with a speed and direction control in a handy package. G'day, I'm gonna show you how to get started driving servos with the Picadev servo driver and a Raspberry Pi. We'll get these two connected to two kinds of servos and run some example code so you can create angular or continuous rotation motion. Let's get started. Picadev servo driver features the standard Picadev connectors for daisy chaining to other modules. There's four servo channels, a high power input for providing power to the servos, a power LED to let you know that it's on, and an address switch. This address switch allows you to add up to three additional servo drivers to the same Picadev bus. For now, make sure both these switches are in the off position. To follow along, you'll need a Raspberry Pi that you can run like a desktop computer connected to the internet. You'll also need a Picadev adapter for Raspberry Pi and servo driver, and a Picadev cable to connect everything together. You'll need at least one servo. Servos come in lots of different shapes, sizes, and types, but I'm gonna use these two today. I have an angular servo and a continuous rotation servo. A note about power. Servos can be really power hungry. The regular Picadev bus and cables simply can't provide enough current to drive these motors. So we'll need to connect an external power supply via one of the USB-C connectors. So you can use a mains powered adapter like this one, or for portability, you may want to use a USB battery bank and USB cable. Exactly how much current your project really needs depends on how many servos you drive at the same time, how big those servos are, and how much torque they need to deliver. A good starting point is to budget about 0.7 amps per small servo and about 2.4 amps for a large servo. Servos are usually packaged with some assorted mounting hardware. These are the servo horns and some fasteners to hold them on and secure the servo. You can even get some special servo wheels, which are great for continuous rotation servos. For now, pick your favorite servo horn, press it onto the splined shaft and secure with a screw. There are four servo channels labeled one through four. Connect your servo to channel one. Servos usually come with a standard three pin connector with connections for ground, power, and signal. On the servo driver, these are labeled negative, positive, and SIG respectively. Make sure you connect your servo correctly as they may be damaged if you plug them in the wrong way around. Your servo may have different colored wires to this one. In general, the darkest wire is the negative wire. You can also identify the negative wire on the servo connector itself. It's indicated by a small facet or chamfer that runs along one edge of the connector. That's the negative pin. Connect your Picadev adapter to your Raspberry Pi. For a Raspberry Pi 4, this arrow will point towards the Ethernet connector. Connect one end of your Picadev cable to the adapter and to connect the other end to your servo driver. Then connect your servo power. We're ready to boot up the Pi. My Pi has booted up and I need to make sure that it's going to work with Picadev. In the Applications menu, go to Preferences, Raspberry Pi Configuration, and under the Interfaces tab, make sure you have I2C enabled. Next, under the Applications tab, go to Programming and Thony. We're going to work in Thony to program in this tutorial. Go to Tools, Manage Packages, and search for Picadev. There it is and make sure you install or upgrade to the latest version. I'm starting with an example for an Angular server. If you're using a continuous rotation server, we'll get to that one next. In the article for this tutorial, find the example for Angular servers and copy all of that code into Thony. Control C to copy and Control V to paste. And we can press that green run button to run the script and the servo springs to life immediately. Nice, let's take a closer look at the script. We start by importing a delay function and then we import the modules that control the servo. We have the servo driver for this piece of hardware and the Picadev servo for this piece of hardware. We start by initializing the servo driver. 
we call the picadev servo driver initialization function and we call that controller. So anytime you see controller in this code, we're referring to this physical servo driver. We use the picadev servo initialization function and we need to give it two arguments, the controller that it's attached to and the channel of that controller. So here we're referring to controller because that's the servo driver we just created and we're connected to channel one. So anytime you see servo in this code, we're referring to this physical servo. And now driving the servo to different angles is as easy as setting the servo.angle attribute. The script starts by setting zero degrees, a delay, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and then back to zero. That was the stepping of the servo at the start of the script. Finally, we use a for loop to sweep the servo more slowly. So we say 4x in range from zero, to 180 degrees in steps of five degrees. We set that angle and then there's a short delay. Let's see that again. Step, 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 and then another step. That was the first part. And now the slow sweep. And if we change this to a step of one degree, which means we can just remove it because one is default, and we change this to 20 milliseconds. If I run the script again, we should get a slower, smoother sweep. Initializing a servo in this way initializes it with the default timing. Servos are digital devices driven by a pulse, and that pulse comes from the servo driver. Different servos from different manufacturers may have different timing requirements. And so we can comment out this simple setup and uncomment this more explicit setup. This includes arguments for min US and max US. These are the minimum and maximum pulse lengths that are expected by that type of servo. You can find that information in a servo's data sheet. There's also a degrees argument because not all servos are 180 degrees. Some might be more and some might be less. If you find that your servo is making a buzzing sound at the ends of its travel, it's probably a good idea to have a look at the servo data sheet and update these properties. I'm going to save this script as Angular servo.py to a picadev directory in my home directory. Let's move on now to the continuous rotation servo example. I can unplug my Angular servo and bring in my continuous rotation servo. Again, make sure it's plugged in the correct way around. In the article, find the continuous rotation servo example, highlight all of that code, copy it, and back in Thony, open a new script and paste in the code. Click the green run button. So we're turning in one direction quickly and then slowly, and then the other direction slowly and then quickly. We have a very similar initialization as before. We do the two imports as in the previous example, we initialize the controller and we're calling the same picadev servo initialization function, but we're passing in some different arguments. Controller and channel one are the same, but this time, because we're working with a continuous rotation servo, we're passing in midpoint and range, both in microseconds. These are similar to the min US and max US arguments, except with continuous rotation servos, it's a little easier to think about it in terms of the midpoint and the range. And that's because the midpoint for a continuous rotation servo is when it's stopped. To set the speed for a continuous rotation servo, we just update the dot speed attribute. And you can see we set it to one for fast, 0.2 for slow, negative 0.2 for slow in the reverse direction, and negative one for fast reverse. And then we can set a speed of zero for stop. Now, if your servo does not come to a complete stop like mine, you can see it's kind of starting and stopping. You may need to tune it on the back of your servo. There may be a tuning potentiometer. If you don't have that, it's okay. There's another way to proceed. But if you have a tuning potentiometer, you can just turn that pot when the speed is set to zero to find the zero point and the server comes to a complete stop. Now let's imagine you don't have one of those tuning potentiometers. Here I have a continuous rotation servo and I've got code running where all we're trying to do is stop the servo. I don't have a tuning potentiometer, so what can I do? You can update this midpoint value. Let's try incrementing it a little bit. 1,550. Okay, that makes it a little bit slower. We need to go a little further though. Let's go to 75, 1575. 
and now it's stopped. And that's why with continuous servos, we work in terms of midpoint and range because it makes it a lot easier to tune a servo even if the servo has no potentiometer. Now it's not too hard to drive multiple servos too. Here I've connected one angular servo to each channel of the driver. Now I'll remix the angular servo example. I'll start by removing all the code that we don't need. Each real servo needs its own call to the initialization function. So I'll just copy and paste this line another three times and update the channel number for each servo. Now we have four server instances in our code that we can control independently. I'll create an infinite loop that just sets each servo to the same angle in a sequence. And there's a delay between each servo. When I run the script, we can see each servo travels 90 degrees in sequence. Pretty cool, right? Now it's also possible to daisy chain up to four servo drivers on the same bus. Recall this first driver has both address switches off. To add the second servo driver, I'll first set a unique address switch configuration by setting address switch number one. Address switch number two stays off. Then daisy chain the PicoDev and USB connections. And add an additional four servos. Now in the code, I'll be explicit with the address switch setting for my first driver, just so we don't get confused. Then create a second instance of PicoDev servo driver. Here the address switch argument ASW encodes the state of the address switches. Since address switch one is on, I'll put a one in the first column of the argument. The second switch is off, so there's a zero. Now for the familiar process of initializing the individual servos. And this time we're using a different servo driver. To tell them apart, I renamed my first driver controller A, and the second one is controller B. Eight is a lot of servos to write code for, so I'll put them all in this list called servos and use a for loop to perform an action for each servo. Run the code and there's eight servos being controlled individually. And look what happens when I drive them all together to produce this nice wavy effect. Now this idea is extensible for up to four servo drivers for a total of 16 servos. That's heaps of servos. So you may need to do some power measurements to make sure your power supply can handle it. And so there you have it. We can drive both angular and continuous rotation servos using the PicoDev servo driver. We can connect these servos to any channel that we like, and we can even connect multiple servo drivers together to drive a lot of servos. We hope you found this tutorial interesting. If you make something cool from this little starter project, let us know on our forums. That's also the best place to go if you need any help with this guide. Best of luck, and until next time, happy making.